Now in the first pass of the algorithm, we are keeping we are keeping track of how many times each individual item appeared in this file. So that can be done relatively easily by having an array of size capital N. So if for example we are looking at the number of items in um, some chain of stores as large as Walmart or approximately the same order of magnitude, we could have about a hundred thousand or a few hundreds of thousands of uh, items. So we just need to allocate an array of size a hundred thousand and each item as we know has a unique item ID which is a positive integer in the range 1 to n. So when we encounter an item of ID 10, we'll just add 1 to the 10th element of this array. Then when we encounter the item 15, we will add 1 to the 15th element of this array. And so we can continue like this by just maintaining an array of size capital N, which is a relatively small array. Uh, compared to the size of typical uh, the typical size of main memory, we can easily use this space in order to generate all the counts and discover frequent item sets of size one. But when we are in the second pass, the size of our array now has to be capital N choose two because we are generating all possible pairs of items and we are keeping track of counts for all the pairs and there are n choose two such pairs. So let's look at a couple of ways of implementing or storing these n choose two counts these uh, n choose two counts in the worst case. It's obviously not necessary that we will encounter every single pair of items in this file maybe some pairs of items uh, never occur together in the same basket. So this n choose 2 is the maximum number of pairs that we can have from n items. So the first approach for storing these counts is called the triangular matrix approach. This is actually called approach number 2 in the slides but I'm going to call it as approach number one because this is the easier one to understand, the more natural one to uh, uh, visualize. So very, very naively speaking, you can think of maintaining the counts of pairs of items, i and j, in a two-dimensional array, which has capital N rows and capital N columns, and the count of the pair i comma item i comma item j will be stored in the cell corresponding to the ith row and the jth column. So this cell will store, uh, will keep track of counts of how many times item i appeared together with item j. But if we allocate an array of size n by n, then there'll be repetition because even when the jth item occurs with the ith item the entry j comma i which is basically identical to the entry i comma j because the ordering doesn't matter since we are talking about sets or pairs of items without regard to the to their uh, order since the ordering doesn't matter there'll be duplication so we don't want to maintain these duplicates and as we discussed earlier we don't want to keep track of counts for pairs of items where both items are actually identical. So instead of maintaining this uh, literally rectangular uh, two-dimensional array, we just need we just need one half of this uh, entire 2D array. We just need a triangular half of this rectangle because a triangular half will have all the counts that we need without any repetition. 
So the triangular half could be visualized like this or it could also be visualized like that. So basically this is equivalent to saying that we still have a two dimensional array but each row is of a different size. So the first row will store counts for pairs of items 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2 and so on till 1 comma n. The second row will store counts for so instead of actually we, we are not going to store 1 comma 1 we are just going to start from 1 comma 2 because 1 comma 1 doesn't make any sense the second row will store 2 comma 3 2 comma 4 and so on till 2 comma n the third row will store 3 comma uh, 4 3 comma 5 and so on till 3 comma n so you can see that in the first row there are n minus 1 uh, counts. In the second row there are n minus 2 counts. In the third row there are n minus 3 counts. And so the shape that we are going to get is something like this. First row has n minus 1 counts. The second row has n minus 2. The third row has n minus 3 and so on. Until the last row, the very last row is going to have a single count. n minus 1 comma n. This is the n minus one through and it's just going to have a single entry. So given a pair i comma j we can easily determine using a simple algebraic formula as to where exactly the count for this pair is going to be maintained in the triangular array. So Literally speaking, we won't be storing this as a triangular array. We'll just have a long single dimensional array where the first n minus 1 elements of this triangular array are stored as the first n minus 1 elements of this linear array. Then the second row, which has one less element than the first row, will be stored after the first row in this unidimensional array. Then the third row will be stored after the second, then the fourth row will be stored after the third and so on. And obviously these rows are decreasing in size, so at the very end we are just going to have a single cell corresponding to the n minus first row. Now given a pair i comma j, you can easily calculate what is the index in this unidimensional array where the count for this pair is being stored. So I'll leave it as an exercise for you to figure out what will be the uh, index in the unidimensional array for the count of a pair i comma j, assuming i is less than j. Uh, which index of this unidimensional array should we look up in order to uh, find out what the current count is for this pair? Now how much space does each cell in this unidimensional array require? Well because we are keeping track of counts which are basically integer counts of how many times uh, the pair of items appear together in a transaction. This is just going to be a unidimensional array of integers mapped from a triangular version in principle. Okay, so this triangular diagram is actually implemented as a unidimensional array and the total length of this unidimensional array is going to be the number of cells in the triangular array. So this is basically the total number of pairs of elements or, or items drawn from the universe of all items, the universal set of all items which is uh, of size capital N. So this triangular array ha is going to have n choose two cells, one cell for each pair of items. And so this unidimensional array is also going to have n choose two cells because each cell of the triangular array maps to a cell of this unidimensional array. So since there are n choose 2 pairs in the triangular array, we have n choose 2 pairs in the unidimensional array 
and so we have n choose 2 times 4 bytes in total this is the total amount of space needed by this unidimensional array this is the total number of cells in the unidimensional array and this is the size of each cell since we are maintaining counts we just need to allocate 4 bytes because 4 bytes are what is needed to store an integer count so this is the first approach for keeping track of the counts for all the pairs of items let's look at the second approach next